I wanted to give you seven tips that will help you pray Qiyam al-Layl. Number one is to not go all out when praying Qiyam al-Layl. And I know that may sound counterproductive, counterproductive, but hear me out a little bit. Now, we're, we will be tempted to get up and pray like an hour of Qiyam al-Layl, or two hours of Qiyam al-Layl, because we're charged up and we're really excited about praying Qiyam al-Layl, and you want to experience that spiritual time that I talked about. But I tell you to take it easy. That get up for five or ten minutes. But get up for a time that you can be consistent with. The Prophet ﷺ said that the most beloved actions to Allah are those actions done consistently even if they're less. Meaning it is better for us to pray five minutes of Qiyam al-Layl for the rest of our lives than to get up and pray two hours tonight, tomorrow we pray an hour and then nothing after that. Tip number two, make the intention to pray Qiyam al-Layl before you go to bed. Now this is one of the, this is one of the amazing things that the, that the Prophet ﷺ, it's like a, one of the, the tips that the Prophet ﷺ actually gives. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person who goes to bed with the intention to pray Qiyam al-Layl, meaning before going to bed, they said, inshallah, tonight I'm going to pray Qiyam al-Layl. And they set their alarm and all that stuff. And they wake up in the morning and they realize Fajr is already in and they missed Qiyam al-Layl. The Prophet ﷺ said this person will not only get the reward for Qiyam al-Layl, but they will also, this sleep will be a sadaqah for them, will be a charity from Allah. Meaning they will have a blessed sleep. They will have barakah in their sleep. So if you made the intention, and you got up in the morning, it's like a win-win situation. Alhamdulillah, if you made the intention and you woke up, you got to pray Qiyam al-Layl, that's awesome. If you, got, if you made the intention and you didn't wake up, you get the reward for Qiyam al-Layl. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is tell someone that you're going to wake them up for Qiyam al-Layl. So call up one of your friends or a family member. I'll tell them, listen, I got you tonight. Don't worry about it. I'll wake you up. You tell them, I will wake you up for Qiyam al-Layl, insha'Allah ta'ala. And you know what this is going to do? This is going to force you to get up because now you're responsible for somebody else. <laughs> you're responsible to wake someone else up. And here's the thing, right? It's not just you're responsible. If you manage to get up, inshallah ta'ala, you are maximizing your reward. Because not only are you waking yourself up for Qiyam al you're waking somebody else up. And you will be rewarded for, the act, for, for their action. As the Prophet said, the person who starts a good sunnah, something good, meaning encourages someone else in a good deed, they will have the reward of their own action and the, and the reward of the others who followed in that action until the day of judgment. Can you imagine you got up tonight and you called somebody and you said, listen, get up for Qiyam al-Layl. And this person now, because of that one phone call, they started praying Qiyam al-Layl for the rest of their life. And you may be, khalas, this is the only night you prayed Qiyam al-Layl, you never prayed Qiyam al-Layl again. This is the only night, khalas, you're like, okay, I can't do this, forget this. But they managed to pray Qiyam al-Layl for the rest of their lives. Now you're getting reward for all of their Qiyam al-Layl. I mean, that's just amazing. And imagine that they woke up somebody else and the reward continues for you until the end. Number four, go to sleep early. And I know this is something that you know, we kind of abandon and we don't really think about sleeping early. But I tell you that the Prophet ﷺ would dislike staying up after Isha. And I'm not saying, listen, pray Isha, go to bed 10 minutes later, because the Prophet ﷺ would sometimes delay his Isha prayer. I'm saying go to sleep at a reasonable hour. And make the intention that you're doing this not to just to get rest, but to pray Qiyam al-Layl. And you'll see your sleep will be, have barakah in it. It'll be a blessed sleep. Yeah. Number five. Don't be too comfortable when you go to bed. And at the same time, don't be too uncomfortable. And I know uh, we're tempted in this day and age to buy like the fluffiest, nicest mattress we can possibly find. And that's, all, that's cool. And you know, that's, we hope that that will give us better sleep. But actually, actually, it doesn't really give us better sleep. And the thing is, if we're too comfortable, we're not going to be too likely to wake up. And so this is why you'll see people now, they'll go to the other side and they'll say, listen, sleep on the floor. And I know people will say, you know what, I'm just going to sleep on the floor because I'm going to implement the Sunnah of the Prophet and I'm going to sleep on the floor and I'm going to have, I'm going to get up for Qiyam al-Layl. What usually ends up happening is people don't get restful sleep and they get overly tired. 
So if they manage to get up for Qiyam al-Layl, it's like this weird experience where they're tired and this and that. And so I say, listen, find a bed which isn't too comfortable and find a, find a bed that isn't too comfortable either. So something in the middle. And as we know, the bed of the Prophet ﷺ was made out of uh, date palm leaves to the point when the Prophet ﷺ, when he would get up, he would have marks on his back, sallallahu alayhi wa Number six, uh, go to sleep in a state of tahara, in a state of purity. And this was the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and he instructed us to encourage us to go to sleep uh, in a state of tahara. And you'll find that if you sleep in a state of wudu, you're doing a couple things. Number one, you're reminding yourself of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So you're saying, listen, I'm implementing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ before going to bed. And this will cause you to have barakah in your sleep. Because you can have two people, they both slept two hours. And one person has no barakah in his sleep and he'll get up and he'll be tired. But this other person has slept two hours, they had barakah, they had blessings in their sleep. So this two hours was like the most amazing sleep they had. So one of the ways to infuse barakah in our lives and in our sleep is to implement the sunnah of the Prophet So take the sunnah and, and apply it. My last tip, inshallah, and I'm going to end with this, is try not to eat and drink too much.